that time again? Yes, it is. Hello and a warm welcome. It is the thorn among the three roses today. Nice to have you with us for another edition of The Coaching Hour. It's a podcast and it's also sit around the table chat, I guess you could say. And we're so thrilled that you are able to join this uh, as we get into the second season uh, that you're able to join us for this, that is. Nice to have you here. I'm Paul Rotherham. We're joined yet again by the lovely Nia Nell. Today we're talking parenting. Hello, ladies. I'm going to allow you to do the introduction again, Mareka, because you're so good at it. Good. Thank you so much, Paul. Yes. Again, welcome, Nia Nell. We look forward to spending another session with you. So Nia Nell is sharing a part of her Life Simplified series with us. And as you mentioned, Paul, today we're going to talk about Parenting Simplified. But before I get into that, not only is Nanel a multi-platinum singer-songwriter, she's also trained as a transformation mentor, theater healing, brain germ, sound healing, breath work, access bars, all of these topics that really fascinate and interest me. But, be, but obviously, we're not going to go into those topics. And Parenting Simplified is something that I'm particularly interested in this morning because you know, my son is turning, going into his um, teenager phase, and I don't know always how to deal with that. And of all the aspects of my life, I think parenting is probably the most difficult. Even being a life coach, that's one of the most difficult parts because we don't always know are we doing it right? Um, are we doing it wrong? So, Nianel, over to you. Why did you decide to include parenting in your simplified series? Well, maybe because I'm a mother of triplets. <laughs> and I think, you know, um, I, I, I laugh. It's, 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 you know, I believe that we call our children into our reality to come and teach us something. And we think that we are the ones teaching our children because, you know, we're older and we have more life experience and stuff. But think about it, your, your children. Um, I had my, my girls when I was uh, 35 years old. Just before I turned 35, I gave birth to my girls. And they, so that means they have 35 years of downloads um, into the, 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 the universe, into the cosmic, you know, into their evolution. They are 35 years ahead of me when it comes to experience and, and, and stuff, you know. And, and this is what, what we don't think. We, we think we only start existing the minute we are born here in a physical form. But the truth are, are <laughs> we're endless beings, you know. Um, and, and so whatever we experience here on the physical plane is always downloaded into the all that is energy of creation. So as we evolve and as we grow um, and become, every experience we have is downloaded into this all that is energy. Um, that creates our reality. And so um, our children, when they come in, and I believe often that when, when we are children, the minute we have a little life challenge or, or, or something that we need to deal with, we send out a call into the universe um, for assistance, you know, because everybody is kind of your mirror. Everyone is your teacher. Um, and so we send out this call when we're children. So, you know, when I was a child, um, uh, this is just my perspective, this is my experience, you know, whether this was the truth or the reality doesn't matter. This is how I perceived it. I perceived that um, my mom made me feel like I'm a really strong person and I'm very talented. And because I am so strong and because I'm so talented, she always made me feel like I need to hold back a little bit, you know, so that my sisters could get and other people also. And she's just like, just gets their turn now, just hold back a little bit, you know. So I had this feeling like I never get what I want. Um, I always have to make first sure that everyone else is okay because I'm so talented, because I'm so strong. Um, you know, I need to hold back a little bit to make sure everyone is okay first before I get. So my little girl uh, self send out this message into the universe. How am I going to get what I want? How am I going to get what I want? You know, and then I brought in <laughs> triplets and I have these three amazing little uh, girls. They are very strong personalities and they come in with the theme song. Um, I want it all. I want it all. And I want it now. 
So I brought in into my reality this these three very strong personalities that knows what they want, they know they deserve it, and they want it now. And uh, and they always get what they want, you know. And so the first time in my life I have this in my face. And then the very first thing that we want to do as parents, okay, all the conditionings that we have been taught from when we were a child, immediately you want to start teaching this to them. You want to start limiting them. No, guys, you know, we need to be kind. We need to be compassionate. You know, we can't be selfish. We first make sure that everybody else is okay. How does this make you feel? So they used to start throwing it back to me. How does that make you feel, mom? How does that make you feel, mom? You know, so everything that we think, but what we're trying to teach them is these old ways that hasn't worked for us in the first place. They have come to teach us. And if we can learn, and this is when you start, um, uh, you know, you come into, to, <laughs> into butting heads with your children. If you're trying to teach them your old ways, that hasn't even worked for you, but you thought it works for you, and now you try and teach them. So um, what I've learned with my children is, is that um, they come fully equipped into this plane of existence. They, the only thing that we need to basically do is make sure that they have food when they are little, that they are taken care of, that they, you know, they have shelter and their clothes and everything. But when it comes to teaching them anything about joy and happiness and about life, they are 35 years ahead of me, you know. And my life started to change when I sat back and I started looking at my children and started to take notes and, and learn from them, you know. Um, my kids are, are, are great teachers for me and they will bring everything into my reality. So when they were little, the only challenge was um, basically the first three years to look after them to make sure they're okay because it's three babies at one time and I do believe that um, you know um, one of my life lessons is just being I don't know if you've listened to my music but I've written so many songs about life's gift to me is just to be just being just being just being <laughs> and then you will get triplets you know because Control freaks get triplets, so they can learn to let go. You only have two hands. You cannot control three at one time. So I'm so grateful <laughs> that I've manifested this um, this into my life. I actually became pregnant with triplets uh, naturally. Um, so I, I decided I want to have babies. I mean, um, we decided, okay, I'm going to leave the contraceptive. And one month later, I was pregnant <laughs> with triplets, which is beautiful because I think what they've taught me is, is that there is really no way to control things. There is really no way to even manage anything. And I think the best thing that we can do in life is to let go and let God. I don't, it's not, it's not religious or spiritual or anything, but there is within you the power that has created all that is. And within you, if you can learn to trust that and let go. So the first 12 years of my children's life were pretty easy. It was just basically managing um did you eat? You know, did you go to the toilet? Have you got clothes on? It's kind of just that first part of, you know, but then something very magical happened when they turned 12. They changed completely. And you're like, who's these children? You know, they become teenagers. <laughs> and then it's very challenging. And with us, the first thing that happened was is that um, uh, I got divorced when my children were, uh, were six years old. And so um, I was dating someone already for five years uh, before they were 12. And I said to them, guys, um, and this, this happened with lockdown. I would like for uh, my partner to stay with us now because we were just dating. And all three of them were sitting like, no. And I'm like, but why not? No. Okay. And here, I turned into that five-year-old little girl again saying, but I never get what I want, you know? And I had to learn to give myself what I believed that I wanted in that moment. And all three of them punished me. They stayed with their dad for a month and a half, refusing to come back home, you know? And I had to stand strong because here's something that I've learned. Sometimes we give things to other people. You know, we um, we think we're going, we're going to give them something, but if we deep down resent what we're giving, so so say for instance, I gave them their will and their way, and I didn't move in with my partner. Deep down, I would have resented 
um, not doing this. I would resent them. So what I'm truly giving to my children in that case would be my resentment. Um, you know, and, and sometimes we give something to someone and we feel guilty. We give it from a place of guilt or we give it from a place of resentment. Whatever you're feeling is what you're truly giving. So there's a lot of parents that does a lot of sacrificing for their children. I'm going to sacrifice this, I'm going to sacrifice it. But deep down, hand in hand with sacrifice comes resentment. And then eventually, everything that you sacrificed in the end, you're waiting for a return on your investment. Okay. And, you know, some, some, somewhere it's going to be okay. And then you don't get that return. And then the only thing that's left is resentment. So whatever you give to your children, make sure that it doesn't come from a place of resentment or guilt. I'm not giving you this from guilt or I'm not giving you this from resentment. Because what you truly give is what you're feeling. And that counts for everybody in your life. If you do something for someone, but deep down you resent it, or you're doing it from a place of guilt, what you're actually giving them is that. So I made a decision. I thought if I, if I now give them their will then i'm going to be in resentment and i will resent my children and i never want to resent my children i never want to give them my resentment and i never want to give them my guilt so i decided i'm gonna you know stuck to my guns and i'm going to do this and then i sat down and i i, I thought to myself what is this resistance what is this resistance that i'm getting from my children because you must remember anything that is happening in your life is your creation and it's basically happening because you are in resistance yeah so if you're receiving any resistance from people in the world or any resistance from your children you need to go and sit down and say okay where am i in resistance okay. so i did this exercise i went to go sit down and i thought to myself okay where am i in resistance to my partner moving into my home moving in with me where am i in resistance of this in, in general where am i in resistance well first of all i'm i'm in i was in terrible resistance to giving myself what i need because i thought that mustn't happen i was conditioned to think that everyone else must get what they need and so deep down i was already thinking that is this the best for everybody and you know not what is best for me what is it that i want but this is my conditioning coming forward and then i was um, married for and in a relationship for 18 years with their father where i felt like i didn't have the freedom to do what i want to do and be who i want to be um, this just again my perspective understand that it's, it's, it's no reflection on somebody else your life will be exactly as you believe it is so somewhere I thought that when you're in a relationship, you sort of have to give up yourself. You have to let go of your needs and desires and live for somebody else. So now having this new person moving in, I'm thinking, mm, it was so great dating this person for five years, but if he moves in, is he gonna like, you know, it's gonna be all his way again? Will I be able to, to be myself? Will I be able to do the things that I wanna do? Can you see? So I started realizing the resistance was actually mine. I was afraid that I'm going to move back in and then it's going to be the same situation that you know, it took me 18 years to, to let go of. You know? And so as I said, then I, I it took my partner and I said, okay, I have to let go of this and all of this resistance. And he said, and I said, what if this happens and what if we don't fall in love? What if we fall out of love because when people live together, what if, what if, what if, what if? And he says, and what if everything just goes well? What if it just is wonderful, you know? And so <laughs> that was wonderful to see. But the point being, when I released my resistance, within a few months, the kids were no longer in resistance to this. So whatever is happening between you and your children is basically just a reflection of what is happening within yourself. Okay? And the minute you meet your children head on with something that needs to change within you, you must remember this. And in that period, I was actually writing um, a workshop called the Relationship Simplified Workshop, and my manual was lying there on the table. And my firstborn, who is my greatest trigger, you know, she'll come in and she'll show me all my all my stuff. She says, she picks up the manual, but luckily I knew she was going to ask this. Why did I know that she was going to ask this? Because I had this thought myself, you know, your children will call you on your stuff. I didn't want to say that. The other word but they'll call you on your stuff she comes and she picks up that manual she says mom and she waves and she says you're going to teach a course on relationships i said yes yeah. she says and you're so bad at relationships because you see now we're, we're fighting about this whole thing but i had my answer ready for her i said my baby do you know 
when you go and take a course, you take a course because you want to learn something. But when you give a course, you do it because you want to master something. You're not saying you've mastered it. You're giving the course because you really want to master. So I really just want to get very good at this. She was silent. But this is the thing that your children will do. They'll come and they'll bring your stuff for you so that you can look at yourself and see what needs to shift and change within you. Remember again, what you need from your children is what you're needing to give to yourself. And what you want to change about your children is what you need to learn to change about you. Okay, so throughout my relationship with my children, I really wanted to impress them with my knowledge, with everything. I, I really wanted them to acknowledge me as a good mother, as a knowledgeable person, you know, and, and, and do you think they're going to give that to me? No, because that is the thing that I was learning to give to myself. I had to learn to acknowledge myself as a good mother. I had to acknowledge myself as a knowledgeable person in everything I, in, in, I teach. So as they were growing older in their teenagers years, they developed some, uh, you know, every, every child has their little things, but your three girls with a lot of hormones in this home. So we had to go through uh, depression, we had to go through self-destructive behavior. And when I started noticing these things, I jumped in full force because, you know, I am, this is what I do. I'm a, I'm a mentor, I'm a healer, let me help my kids. And the more I try and help my kids, the worse things got. Because the minute you jump in and you say, let me help you fix this problem, you are already establishing, you say to your child, here is a problem. You have a problem. So the minute you jump in and trying to fix and help and save your child and anybody for that matter, you say, listen here, you have a problem. Let me help you fix that problem because you are not capable. You don't know how to fix this. Let me do it for you. So you establish that there's a problem and you make them feel that they're incompetent and they can't deal with their own problems and you must be the savior. Okay, so here's the thing. I started to realize that by doing this, I'm putting the focus on something and I'm making them feel incompetent. And that's when I started letting go. And I started watching my children. And I realized, you know what? These girls came in fully equipped. Yes, these are challenges. I see these things. But the only job I have here is to unconditionally love and accept my children and the greatest gift that i can give my children is to believe in them the greatest gift that we can give humanity is to believe in them because what we believe about people they will become but also what we believe about ourselves and others we become so i decided to just use this new line every time they have a challenge i go i can see this this that you're taking strain here, but you know what I believe in you. I believe you've got this. I believe that you will solve this. I have faith in you. This is the thing I started to say to my, my, my teenage daughter. You've got this. I believe in you. And you must know if you need my love, my help, I'm here. But I don't give them my help. I say, I'm here if you need my help. But I believe that you've got this. You've got this. I believe in you. And things started to change tremendously. You know, remember also parents, your children chose you, okay, not for your virtues and not for your perfect perfections. They chose you for your vices, mainly. Yeah, they chose your diet, your DNA and your, your strengths as well, but also your weaknesses. And they want that your vices, your weaknesses, because that in the end becomes their strengths. Now, remember, your, your parents had lots of flaws, but because of their flaws, you became the person that you are today. And your kids also chose you for your flaws so that they can transcend that, so that they can go beyond that, okay? And I believe that being a parent is one of the most humbling experiences because at some point you are going to be your children's perpetrator. They want almost you to be their perpetrator so that they can become strong in that, so that they can stop being a victim and become stronger. Now, I always know that we, we play these role, roles as people. We play the role of savior, victim, and perpetrator. It's important to understand what we learn from this. Uh, Mareka, I think I did talk about this in our first, um, did I talk about the perpetrator, the victim, and the savior in our first? You just mentioned uh, it very briefly. 
Okay, so the thing is, we play many roles in this world, but these three roles are, are roles that you're going to play throughout your entire life, and you're going to play all three of them. Basically, you play the, the, the main role you choose is based on your mom and your dad. So if you, you want to imagine a triangle when you're a child, okay, imagine, when, remember when you were a child, and now this is your perspective, this is not really how it was, but someone will feel to you in this triangle relationship between mom, dad and you, someone will feel to you like the perpetrator, someone will feel to you like the savior and someone will feel to you like the victim. Okay. Now, a perpetrator can just be a dad that's very busy at home and then mom sits at home alone, uh, uh, dad's working and mom's home alone and she feels like she's the victim and dad's always away and then you sort of feel like you need to save mom, then you become the savior, dad is the perpetrator, mom's the victim. However this played out, or oh, someone was really a perpetrator, abusive and whatever, and someone always like, oh, you know, poor me, that's the victim and then the one who feels like they always have to save everybody. You can just in your mind see which role did you play but the most important thing to remember about these roles is don't become them you are not these roles they're just roles and you will play them and you will play all three of them throughout your life okay when you play the role of victim you are learning to step into your power and to understand that nothing is happening to you you are the creator of your reality you have to learn to stop blaming other people and pointing fingers you have to take responsibility for your creation you need to step into your power and you have to take responsibility for your life and forgive others, release them, because what you're holding on to attracts more of the same into your life. When you're playing the role of savior, let's go to perpetrator first. Perpetrator is a really tough role. This is the one we tend to start playing with our children when they become teenagers. Then immediately we are we are the bad one. We are the perpetrator. It's a very humbling experience. But when you are the perpetrator, you need to learn to love and accept yourself. You are also learning self-control and you're learning self-forgiveness. It is a very, very deep experience of learning to love yourself. I remember a moment when I lost it with my girls so much. They told their father that I don't feed them. I don't give them food. So I realized that there's pizzas coming here with Mr. Delivery all the time. And I'm like, what's going on? Then I started realizing they told their dad I don't give them food. And there was a couple of other things. It wasn't just this experience. And I lost it. And I became my father. 100%. And then I remember after that experience, I was sitting outside and I was just hugging myself and I was like, it is okay. I love you anyway. I love you. I love you. And I've learned to forgive my dad. And I'm like, dad, I, I understand now. I love you. And then you start seeing yourself and your parents. And then you start learning to appreciate your own parents. And you start, <laughs> you start realizing the little stuff that you had with them wasn't that bad. You know, do you understand? And, and it, it, it really creates a deep sense of self-forgiveness self-love self-acceptance when you play the role of perpetrator that is what you're learning now the last role um, is the role of savior now when you're playing the savior it's when you start you know saviors like to take control of everything they want to manage everything they don't have any trust they have to learn to trust and have faith in other people's abilities so when you are a little child and you don't get what you want and you start realizing oh my word my mom's a victim my dad's a perpetrator i have to always look after my mom or, or you do save the situation you become the savior now saviors are secretly always waiting for a savior they're secretly waiting for someone to come and save them and the thing is no one's coming you have to learn to be your own savior you have to learn to give to yourself. You have to learn to delegate and stop taking control of everything. So saviors are learning trust. Saviors are learning to let go and surrender and trust. And that's what my triplets came to teach me. I cannot save them here now. I have to let go and I have to trust that they've got this and I have to believe in them. One day I sat my three daughters together and I told them about this, you know, perpetrator, savior, victim thing. And I said to them, okay, so can you see we all play these roles? So I asked them, which role am I playing for you? And what was so fascinating is that each one of them saw me playing a different role. One said I was the victim, one said I was the perpetrator, and one said I was the savior. So I was playing all these roles for each one of my daughters. And this is what a parent must understand. You will play these roles for your children. 
For some of your children, you'll be a savior. For some of them, you'll be a victim. And for some of them, you'll be a perpetrator. Understand what you are learning when you play these roles. And they must also learn what they are learning from the roles that they're playing. And this idea of being a perfect parent, okay, we cannot give you a manual for parenting because this soul that comes into your reality is so unique. No one can tell you how to raise this child. You're going to have to learn to basically, our children teaches us to learn to love and accept ourselves. Our children comes to teach us to let go of everything that is limiting us. So stop focusing on your children and start focusing on yourself because when you are whole and complete within yourself, that is when you are the best parent for your child. You are going to be the best parent for your child, irrelevant, even if you're the worst person on the world, in the world. You are the best person for your child because your child chose you. Okay? They knew who you are before they even came into your reality. They knew you were going to get divorced. You, they knew you were going to abandon them. They knew that you couldn't give them love or you couldn't give them acceptance. Or they knew you. They wanted you based on all your virtues, but also all your flaws so that they could come, become the person that they want to be. Do you understand? So that they can tran transcend the limitations that they come in, the lessons that they want to learn. So here's my advice. Just, just be the best you. Just love you. Just be gentle with you. Be kind with you. Do your best. Okay. And again, I love this four lines. Be impeccable with your words. In other words, you know, your children will reflect to you what needs to change and heal within you. And your children often reflect to you that inner child that inner child the healing that the inner child needs the children will reflect that to you and then you go sit with your little self you know when my kids say um, my partner couldn't move him i turned into that five-year-old and i had to go and sit with her and say it's okay okay you know you, you can get what you want and here's how you get what you want you don't have to fight you don't have to be mean but it is possible for you to get what you want now also understand that all these versions that we've created of ourselves any version that you've imagined already exists. And the more time you spend on trying to change some version of you, we just fall into it all the time. We just fall into it. That version of you doesn't want to be healed because when you heal it, it doesn't exist anymore. Is it possible for you to just accept that version? It's going to pop its head out every time now and again say, I need this, I need this. And then you hear it, you hear it. But you just say, okay, you there, I accept it. But the minute you try and fix and heal that version again, you're, you, you're swept away by the drama and the chaos of that version again. Okay? So we are truly, as parents and as human beings, learning to fully love and accept every part of us. Okay? And also learning that we are not the savior, we are not the perpetrators, and we are not victims. These are roles we play. Learn the lessons from them. Okay? But the greatest gift, just to sum up, the greatest gift that you can give your children is to believe in them. Believe in them. That is the only thing that we as parents actually can truly give to our children that will encourage them to go and create magnificent lives for themselves. Thank you so much, Nia Now um, That was quite insightful, and I really, um, it makes sense, if you look at it that Does way. Does it make sense? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, you know, the thing is with your children, um, everybody has to just, uh, you know, every, every child that's in your life is so unique. That's why we cannot give you a manual on parenting. This is your very personal journey, but understand that your children only come came into this reality to teach you how to love and accept yourself unconditionally. Sure. Sure. Powerful stuff, eh? Hey? Yes, definitely. Yeah, now, so that doesn't only go for children, it's for everyone that comes into your reality. Absolutely. And this makes any relationship so much better if you understand that, you know, there's different ways of looking at it, but I believe that everybody is you, you know, and they just come and reflect back to you what needs to shift and change and heal within you. And so uh, instead of walking around going, 
you did this, this is happening to me. If you start to take responsibility for your creation, then you'll start seeing that everyone is just coming in to help you. Everyone is just here loving you back to the true self. Okay, now again, everything that you attach to, we spoke about letting go in the previous podcast, everything that you attach to is what limits you. And if you attach to the role of savior or the role of perpetrator or the role of victim, or you attach to the idea that you are a mother and you have to be this perfect mother, or you are a father and you have to be this perfect father, or you attach to the idea of, I want to be this partner to my wife um, or to my, my husband, you know, whatever you attach to, the ideas that you have of yourself, those are the things in the end that limit you. So letting go is a very powerful thing in parenting, because you have an idea based on how you were raised, um, you want to be this parent for your children. So you've already attached to an idea of what kind of parent you want to be. And then very soon, you, your children will prove to you that <laughs> you're going to fail at this. Okay, you're not going to be the parent that you thought you were going to be. Trust me, your kids are designed to come and teach you to let go of the idea of the parent that you thought you wanted to be. They will take you to the place where you feel I'm absolutely failing at this. And that is a good thing. It's a good thing. Let go of the idea of who you think you should be. Because when you let go of it, then anything is possible. Then you can really become who you're supposed to become. Hmm. Oh, thank you so much. Life lessons. Thanks, Nana. Thank you. That was awesome. Uh, am I correct in assuming that this is the last session we're having with you? Or have we got one more? No, we've got one more. Luckily, we've got health and wealth simplified, um, which I'm looking forward to. Um, and for everybody that's listening and watching, and if you really want to get deeper into these topics and work with Nana, the link to her um, Life Simplified series workshops are in the description as well. So you can just click on that um, and visit her website and get in touch with Nia now there. So thank you, Nia now. This was quite insightful. Um, it's really food for thought. Um, I'm just curious, when I, when, I, yes. when I do share this, when I do share this point of view with you guys, is it is it a how do you, how are you perceiving um Marina, if if how would you how would you say is this something brand new or is it something that you knew um i think it's it's something at a deep level that we that we know but we forget because we want to have tools and ways to deal with specific situations and like you said every child is so different and unique I mean, I can't use the same ways with my son and my daughter. They are so different. Um, so I think we know this on a deeper level, but then I don't know why we forget. You know, we forget that we abide to the drama, I guess. Exactly. We think we have to teach our kids something. Yes. But the truth is that your relationship with your child, okay, and with anybody on this planet, is just another relationship. Okay? Mm. And and we think of them as little and small, but just treat your children like you would treat yourself. Mm. Yeah. But there is the thing. We don't even know how to treat ourselves. Okay? You know, we treat ourselves so harshly. And you will end up treating your children like you treat yourself. And then they will come and show you, look how you're treating me. Okay? Mm. So you realize, oh my word, this is how I'm treating myself. Mm. So it's just a beautiful relationship that is in your life, that is teaching you to love and accept yourself. There is um, a, a quick question there now, because it is, although you say they are there to teach us, and I fully agree, I do deal with a few um, adult clients, which the way that they've been brought up have developed a few challenges in terms of, because they, they their parents didn't teach them certain principles in terms of, self-discipline um taking responsibility and ownership and i do see how this plays out as an adult because there's certain you know of the way so that they've been brought up so here's the thing some parents do teach their children responsibility and stuff and then they rebel against it you know um then so here's the thing okay because you didn't teach your kids discipline and you didn't teach your kids this then this one turns out like this 
you know so here i love what you're saying Rebecca, because you you can teach one child discipline and you can have three kids and you can all teach them discipline and taking responsibility but each one of them are going to turn out the four of us here okay the four of us here have been taught discipline and responsibility right Paul? Paul? did your parents teach you that yeah you start becoming resentful of responsibility and you hate discipline in the end of the day because that's what your parents teach you so if they don't teach you that then it's the opposite okay so here's the thing you 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 cannot tell somebody do this you must teach them this okay be the example that you want your kids to become okay? but the greatest example is someone who loves and accepts themselves because that person will give to themselves and when you give to yourself the kids will go especially if you believe it's wrong to give to yourself your kids will go you're such a selfish mom okay they will just point out your own belief systems to you so Marika, my girls were so independent now i've never been big on school i had never enjoyed school as, as a child myself because i just didn't enjoy school so i decided i got a teacher for my kids to to teach them Okay, so they had a homeschool. And I thought this is fantastic because they don't have to go to school that I hate so much and, and get up in the morning and be like a sheep and go and do all these things. Some of them are resenting me for homeschooling. You stole our childhood. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you do with your kids, they're going to resent it in the end of the day. Okay. But these three girls, I never told them wake up for school. I never said clean your room. They are the most dis disciplined kids. They take such responsibility because they thought, oh my word, my mom is never going to like, my mom is just like a fairy angel flying around in the sky and we're in this real world and we better do this. So I never taught them responsibility or discipline, but they are the most disciplined and responsible people because they just, oh, no one's going to do it. Somebody's going to do it, you know. So, you know, again, whatever you teach your kids, just be it, do your best do your best okay and 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 just love yourself through the process because at the end of the day okay doesn't matter what you've done they're probably going to find fault with that and then you are the perpetrator and then you're going to have to learn to love yourself <laughs> so Mareka, Fun. just do your best tell your clients do your best but they'll see the more your resistance the more resistance you receive from your children it shows you that you are now uh, you know, you, you're on the wrong, wrong path. I'm not saying that your kids must always be happy, but the more resistance you receive, this method isn't working. Okay? Mm. Just look at that. If, 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 some, if you're receiving resistance and they're angry with you, it's not working. Okay? And there's, a, there's, a, there's something that always works with children. Always. If you are there for them and you just listen, and you just love them and you just accept them you don't talk too much just let them know i'm here i understand i love you i'm here i believe in you i promise you that is the one thing that every human being on this planet needs they need someone who will fully love and accept them unconditionally that's there for them and then just say you know what paul i believe in you i really believe in you i believe in you and i'm here for you if you need me it's the best you can do I'm going to definitely change my approach to that because yeah, what I'm always doing doesn't always work. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, you know what what I was saying, this is a it's a short journey that we have on this on this um on this road with our children. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget to have fun with them. Don't forget to play with them. And the, the greatest gift is, is when they still want you in their lives and they want to tell you everything. And, you know, they just want to share things with you. Um, just just be there for them. Just love them. Just love them by loving yourself. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Nianel. Any more questions from the ladies? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Long, but thank you. Thank you very much, you guys. I, I so appreciate this opportunity to share, you know. And what I also say, you know, we, we have a lot of things in the end. When you get to that place with your children and in your life where you realize that you absolutely know nothing, that is when you've done enough work on yourself. Honestly, then you've put in enough time 
because it takes a very long uh, time to get to the point where you realize, you know what, I actually know nothing. Leonel, thank you, and we we'll look forward to the next session. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.